Coming up, homeless hound Jesse faces life-changing surgery. Kira the mayor has a heart problem that needs investigating. And Gandalf the falcon has urgent surgery on his lumpy foot. When pets are poorly, wildlife gets wounded, or farm animals feel unwell, they need top vet help. The really lucky ones come here, to Edinburgh University's amazing super high-tech vet school. And now, six kids chosen from 1,000 have become the first ever children allowed to enrol here. I'm all ready. And work alongside the school's top vets. Who wants to take this cow's urine? They're facing an intense training programme. Have you done what, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? And have been pushed to the limit at animal hospitals, vet practices, wildlife parks, and working farms. <laughs> I'm Paul Manctolo. It took me five hard years to train to be a vet, but this lot have only weeks to show me what they're made of. My junior vets have hardly been around animals before. <laughs> That's so cool. Now they're facing real heavy duty vet work. It's like everything's just so <laughs> bonkers. That is amazing. That's cool. Have they got the stomach to succeed? I feel like a real vet. And can they stay calm under extreme pressure? <laughs> Six raw recruits. But I can only choose one winner. The first ever junior vet to win the prestigious head vet title is... Day three, and my junior vets are taking real vet work in their stride. Welcome back to vet school. Your working pairs are... Lauren and Amblest. Will and Sarah. Sam and Morgan. Let's get down to business. Today, my junior vets will be facing up to a hard day's work, helping top professionals here at vet school and at a safari park. I'll be getting regular progress reports and I'll only reward the very best junior vets with today's Vital Vet Work Award, which counts towards my final decision, who to name as head vet. So how's the competition shaping up? Junior vet Morgan is performing well, but hasn't managed any wins yet. He's shown he has a keen eye. Look at that. And a steady hand but he does need to prove to me he can concentrate across a full working day if he wants to win a Vital Vet Work Award. Sarah, on the other hand, can't stop winning, even though she's got very little animal experience. But can her impressive performance continue today? She arrived at vet school with a long-term fear of dogs, and her newfound confidence is about to be put to the test. This is Jessie, a three-year-old Staffy Cross. She's a stray and was found wandering the streets of Edinburgh all on her own. Today, she faces an important operation. She's going to be spayed, which will prevent her having unwanted puppies and will hopefully help her find a new home. Soft tissue surgeon Anna Marks will be working with junior vets Will and Sarah. This is a big day for Sarah. Her anxiety about dogs goes very deep and she's nervous about meeting Jessie. I don't really like dogs because I've had a bad experience with them before in the past and I think I've built a fear of them inside. They're just like coming up and like crawling your face. I think the key thing is, Sarah, when you're approaching a dog is if you stay really calm. If you're nervous, they'll feel nervous. So that's the key thing today, all right? Yeah. Hopefully Sarah's ready to face her fears and say hello to Jessie. Hi, Anna. Hi, Paul. Good morning. <laughs> Would you like to meet Jessie? Okay. Come on, darling. Look at you. Jessie couldn't be friendlier. She's keen to meet the whole team. And Sarah is staying put and staying calm. She just wanted to play, really, but I still was a little bit unsure. Wow. <laughs> How are you feeling, Sarah? 
okay now. You're okay, yeah. You feel okay, better now. You met better. her. Yeah. Yeah, she's nice and friendly, isn't she? Yeah. yeah. With Sarah and Jesse now best of friends, the junior vets head for the small animal theatre to get Jesse ready for her operation. First, she's anaesthetised, so she's unconscious during the op. Will, do you want to tie that tube in for us? Will then connects a tube that will pump anaesthetic gas and oxygen into her lungs throughout her surgery. Sarah has to attach the devices which will allow the team to check on Jessie's heart rate and health during the operation. I was really worried for Jessie because I thought that um, if it went wrong that she might not make it. The other thing we can do is pass down, this is called an esophageal stethoscope. So it goes down her food pipe, if you like, and lies just next to her heart in the middle of her chest. So we actually have a listen to this and we can hear her heart beating through this. Sarah's giving the job of putting the special internal stethoscope down Jessie's throat and inside her chest. So if you want to pass it down, if you just go from there. So there. Yep. Looks yep. good. Go what happens if you aim it wrong? It will just won't go, that's all. Before the operation can go ahead, Sarah must check that the scope is positioned correctly. Yep. Do you hear Yeah, so that's in the right place, that's perfect. Do you want to listen well? So we're really happy, good heart rate, nice pulses, which is well oxygenated, so we're sorted. Jessie's heart is fine and she's ready for surgery. But are both my junior vets ready to help her? Later, things get tense as Jessie's op gets underway with only one junior vet present. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to cut between these two clumps here. At the Blair Drum and Safari Park, Gandalf the Saker Falcon is grounded. He's usually a star performer at the park's flying displays. But today, he needs oh, urgent veterinary attention. That's so cool. Junior vet Sam and Morgan have arrived to help local vet Colin Scott get Gandalf back in action. Gandalf. <laughs> Poor Gandalf has a painful looking growth on his foot and it needs removing. When did you spot that? I think uh, we noticed it a couple of months ago. And as time goes on, it'll start to get bigger and it'll interfere with the, the way his feet uh, move. Falcons use their feet to pick up and keep a firm hold on their food. If the growth's not removed, Gandalf might struggle to eat. The only solution is surgery. So here's the lump here. Imagine having one of them in between your fingers. Well, I've never been this close to a bird before. What do you think of him? I thought he'd be like flying about in your hand, but he seems quite calm. It's because he's got that. It's because hold of on. the head, yeah, exactly. When you come face to face with a falcon, it's very strange because people say that they're like, dangerous and. But uh, Gandalf wasn't, it was calm. So how are you finding it, Sam? This is amazing, this. Su such a great experience. Just have, like, a bird on, on your hand. Surgery is a big deal for a bird. It could also mean another big ordeal for Sam. He had to sit out his last operation after feeling a bit sick. So how will he cope today? I was really, really excited because I wanted to prove to myself that I could do an operation and I was really determined to get through it. Sam, back in the operating theatre, how are you feeling? I think I'm going to feel a bit more confident this time. I'm more comfortable with everything, so I think I'll do a good job. Excellent. Morgan, you've got a really important job today. You're monitoring the anaesthetic. Now, are you going to be able to stay focused? Yeah. OK, guys, let's get started. First, Gandalf needs anaesthetic gas so he's unconscious throughout his op. Morgan needs to concentrate because he'll be monitoring Gandalf while he's anaesthetised during surgery. Not enough gas and Gandalf could wake up in the middle of the op. Too much gas and he wouldn't wake up at all. Later, Gandalf's under the knife. But will Sam make it through the surgery this time? What does it look like? Like a pee. At the vet school's horse hospital, a poorly pony has been brought in for treatment. Kira is 21, a ripe old age for a pony. She has recently lost all her energy and doesn't want to be ridden anymore. Kira has a long term condition called a heart murmur. Her owner Louise is worried it's making her feel tired and unwell. Lauren and Amblest are teaming up with equine expert John Keane. 
John suspects Kira's heart murmur may have got worse, and he wants my junior vets to help him investigate. First of all, do you want to see if you can feel the heart there? Just, just gently pop that there and have a wee feel. At first, I was quite nervous, because I know some horses can be quite twitchy and scared of humans, so they might kick. But Kira was quite a calm horse, so that reassured me. And do you want to go learn as well? I thought, personally, there, was, there wasn't something quite right there, because it was very irregular, the heartbeat was very irregular. Did you hear anything else when you were listening to that? When it's breathing. Boom. Did you hear that? Yeah. So it went lub, dub. OK, so that's the murmur that you hear in there. The team's concerned Kira's heart murmur has turned into a serious heart problem. They'll need to look inside her chest with a device called an ultrasound scanner. First, Anne Blessed attaches some sensors. Then Lauren clips Kira's hair. So Anne Blessed can place a probe close to Kira's heart. She needs the steadiest of hands. Then, it slowly reveals live pictures of Kira's beating heart. That is amazing. And it also shows the problem with one of her heart valves. That yeah. And that's a valve there, so the two valves that we can see in this image here. The leaky valve is allowing blood to flow in the wrong direction in Kira's heart. And Blessed takes a closer look. So which is the one that we're... Like, so we're particularly interested in this one here on the okay. left. Kira's heart could well be the cause of her tiredness. John and the team must now investigate this theory. I think the next stage is to exercise her, look at the heart rhythm during exercise. And later, Kira's heart is put to a high-tech test as the team moves closer to solving her problem. So keep an eye on that ECG. My junior vets are completing an intensive training program here at vet school. And it's here in the training zone where they pick up the skills that will help them in real vet work situations. For impressive training zone performances, I give out vet skills credits, which along with the all important Vital Vet Work Awards, will help me decide who will eventually be named head vet. And in this training zone session, my junior vets are facing a particularly messy challenge. If you'd like to lift the lids and reveal today's challenge. Oh, that is disgusting. Yep, it's poo. All vets need to know what an animal's normal poo, or faeces, looks like. The colour, smell and texture of poo gives up vital clues to a vet. Abnormal poo can mean an animal is unwell. So in today's test, my junior vets, working in pairs, have got five piles of poo from a local zoo that they need to match to specific animals. And on hand to help is top horse vet, John Keane. You need to, to look at the faeces, you need to examine the faeces and really feel the faeces and see what's, what's in there. <coughs> OK, junior vets, can you start your challenge now? Delving in dung like this can be harmful to humans, so it's definitely not something you should try yourself. Looks like rabbit poo, but clumped together. The teams need to use their brains as well as their hands, and thinking about an animal's diet will help my junior vets. Look at the hairs, look, what? you see the white hair? I think, because it's like more grassy, isn't it? Yeah. It looks more like an elephant. Elephants are vegetarian. Good thinking, Sam and Lauren. Elephants can eat over 130 kilograms of vegetation every single day. And the other junior vets are thinking about the animal's diet too. If they both eat grass, the insides look kind of the same. And matching them up to the five pongy piles. Look at all the grass in that. So shall we say that's deer? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Wrong, Morgan and Will. That's zebra poo. It's wet as well. Wet. So otter. 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 Correct. Otters have moist, sticky poos. But there's a problem. Are you not bothered by as well? The dollops of dung are getting right up Morgan's nose. If he doesn't focus fast, his team are going to lose this task. I'm going to be sick. Oh. Sorry, don't want to feel. No, I don't. That's the smelly one. <laughs> Junior Vets, you have 20 seconds left. This is the last chance to change your minds. That's probably the deer, because if you open it up, it's really grassy. Right again, I'm blessed. Deer poo it is. It's been one smell of a vet school challenge. But which pair have made the best dung detectives? Full marks for Sarah and I'm blessed and Sam and Lauren. It's an easy call. 
All four win best skill credits. Well done. Back at Blair Drum and Safari Park, Sam and Morgan are preparing to operate on Gandalf, a nine-year-old Saker Falcon with a worrying lump on his foot. Last time wannabe surgeon Sam went into an operation, it all got a little bit too much for him. So this op is going to be a big test. I was really excited and I just really wanted to just get stuck in. The lump could make it difficult for Gandalf to hold his food firmly. That's a big problem for a bird of prey, so it needs to be removed. So this is the lump here in between these toes. So you can actually see I can move it about. It's like a wee, like a wee pea. So what we're yeah. going to do is just run the scalpel over the top to, uh, to, to get through to the tissue below and then try and dissect it out. And, uh, and then we'll put a couple of stitches in just to hold it in place. As this is Morgan's first ever op, I help him sterilise Gandalf's foot. We start on this lump, which is where he's going to operate and then you work your way around, getting further and further away from it. Give it a good scrub. Top job, Morgan. Now he needs to move on to monitoring Gandalf's heart and breathing, while Colin and Sam can get to work removing the nasty lump from the falcon's foot. So Sam and Morgan are really having to pick up the pace now. Bird anaesthetics are really risky, and the longer they take, the greater the risk of death. Look away if you're squeamish. Here comes the grizzly lump. What does it look like, that lump? It's just like, um, I don't know, really. Just a piece of like a pea. And it's out. Sam stayed the course and steps in to carefully clean the wound. It's vital he does a perfect job, and infection would put Gandalf's life in danger. Morgan's all focused now. He's carefully monitoring Gandalf's heart rate for any sign of a problem. You happy with your patient? Yeah. That's perfect. The team quickly worked to soap the foot wound and Sam finishes off the final stitching. Just leave a couple of millimetres from the end of the knot, OK? That's it, good lad, yeah, excellent, well done. It's now safe for Morgan to turn off the anaesthetic gas and in minutes, Gandalf's eyes slowly open. This is eye opening already. Gandalf's made it, and so did Sam. I'm so proud of him for overcoming his squeamishness. Nice work, junior vet. My last experience in the operating theatre, I had, had a shaky time, but this, this experience was much better. It was amazing because um, I've never been up close to a bird of prey before, and that experience has like, boosted my confidence up. Morgan and Sam did very well, very impressed with them. Uh, hopefully they got the idea, the importance of, of working uh, as a team, so I was certainly very impressed with them. And Gandalf's now back on his feet, ready to return to his starring role in the park's flying displays. At the vet school's horse hospital, junior vets Anne Bless and Lauren are investigating Kira's constant tiredness. She doesn't seem to enjoy being ridden, and they've discovered she has a heart murmur caused by a leaky valve. Bet John Keane wants Lauren and Ambless to test Kira's heart while she's exercising so they can see just how bad it is. If the heart problem is serious, it could mean her riding days are over. So keep an eye on that ECG. We put sensors on the saddle and it sent these images through the computer so you could see like her heartbeat when they would, she was doing different types of movement like walking or doing a trot or like a gallop. The more she runs, the harder her valves will have to work and the faster her heart will beat. If the junior vets see over 240 beats per minute or Kira's heartbeats are irregular, it would mean her illness is worse than John initially thought. Within 10 minutes, the test is complete. The team have their results. Amblest volunteers to deliver their findings to nervous owner Louise. The test shows that her heart's all right, even though she has the murmur, there's no, like, drastic problems with her. So does that mean she could still be dead and then? Yeah. yeah. Exercise is normal. She's not reacting badly to the exercise, so she, she should be all right. 
Kira's heart problem is not life-threatening. In general, there doesn't appear to be anything seriously wrong with Kira. I don't think the problem's going to progress at all, so we can give her heart a clean bill of health. Her tiredness could just be a bit of old age creeping in. Ambless and Lauren took this job in their stride, and I'm impressed with how well they work together. I was very happy when we found out that the heart murmur wasn't affecting her at all, um, so I was very happy about that, especially as it's such a serious condition. I think I cope quite well with the challenge today because I really wanted to work with horses. And now Kira can take life at her own pace for the rest of her days. Back in the small animal hospital, homeless dog Jessie is in for a neutering operation that will stop her having unwanted pups and could help her find a new home. Will and Sarah have just arrived in theatre and are getting ready for surgery. Little turn, and then you tip the tie. This is quite tricky as they mustn't touch the specially clean gowns or gloves with their hands. You've got a good grip on both sides, have you? I think so. This is Sarah's first ever surgery. She's a little nervous and is really struggling with her gloves. I tried to get them on quite a few times, put them down, put them on, but I was thinking I'm not going to be able to operate or anything and I just really wanted to get stuck in and help because it was first operation and I was really looking forward to it. Surgeon Anna Marks decides she must get things underway with Will as her only assistant. I had to start the operation before Sarah was ready because um, with the dog being under anaesthetic we didn't want to end up harming it more than we had to. So we're going to start with the skin incision. Anna starts by making a cut with a scalpel on Jess's tummy. They need to remove the organs that would make puppies. And do I pull it out? Or yeah, like... just pull it out a little bit. Good job. Beautiful. Will is really hands-on here. Meanwhile, Sarah is still struggling to get her hands in her gloves. Sarah cannot join the surgery team until her hands are safely covered. I think because Will was there and he was, like, already helping to operate, I think that kind of calmed me down a bit because, like, I knew that someone was there to at least start, and then I could drain him afterwards and help him out. Anna and Will now need to clamp Jess's blood supply so the uterus and ovaries can be taken out without too much bleeding. If the op's successful, Jess's stray days could soon be over. Where would you like Sarah? At last. Sarah's here to help Jessie as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to cut between these two clumps here. Will calmly makes the crucial cut. You see, perfect, one more. So do you want to change positions with Sarah? And it's straight in at the deep end for Sarah as she helps finish off the job. For a first attempt at surgery, this is amazing stuff. It feels like it's going to work. I know. OK, perfect. You can relax a little bit. So next, we're going to check the, um, that it's not going to bleed. The team use a hot tool called a thermocautery, which will stop bleeding from blood vessels. So far, so good. I'm quite happy with the way things are going. It's going quite well. With Jess's reproductive system safely removed, the junior vets help clean up before the wound is sewn back up again. That's perfect. We're just finishing the final line of suture, so the um, cut is closed and she'll be back to normal. And then, Will, you can just help support it onto the trolley. It's been an intense day's work, but my junior vets have taken really good care of Jessie. Jessie is still unconscious, so my junior vets carefully lift her into the recovery kennel. She needs a few hours to come round. And when the junior vets check on her, she's a bit groggy, but well on the road to recovery. That was truly incredible. Both junior vets eventually got fully involved, and Sarah's dog fears are finally fixed. I think I did quite a good job helping, um, helping pe the people around me to make sure that Jessie was safe. Well, the operation for me was absolutely amazing because to be at my age and do and be in an operating theatre, I just feel really cool. I hope that Jessie finds a new good owner that will actually look after her and not abandon her, you know. I, I could always take her in. <laughs> ah!
every one of my junior vets has experienced things today that they never had to deal with before. And their efforts have left me with a tough decision to make. But who has stood out enough to win a Vital Vet Work Award? Lauren and Amblest worked so hard with Pony Kira and her owner Louise to uncover why Kira was suffering from exhaustion. Will blew me away with how hands-on he got in an op that took stray dog Jesse a step nearer to finding a new home. And Sam made a determined return to surgery, helping Gandalf the Falcon through his foot op. But who went that extra mile to get my precious Vital Vet Work Award? Up until now, you've been judged as pairs, but from now on, you may be singled out for special praise. As is the case today. Will. Congratulations. You are today's top junior vet. All my junior vets have overcome early wobbles and applied themselves to some seriously difficult tasks today. But it was Will who stood out as a super vet in the making. He was confident, caring with his patient Jesse, and technically brilliant. He fully deserves his vital vet work badge for his performance. I feel really proud of myself, and I think that on the task I did quite well, so I think I kind of deserve it, so I'm happy. Next time on Junior Vets. Benji has a painful wee problem. Tina the calf needs surgery down on the farm. And a strange creature with a worrying looking lump arrives at the vet school.